Mr. Speaker, I will just put it in my view in the context as to why we are here today and how we got here today. There's a pandemic worldwide that's affecting all of the countries in the world, yes. including St. Kitts and Nevis. And so we all have to take action to try and protect ourselves and our citizens so that we can have continued good health, which in turn would help us to begin to restore our economy. But there's a saying, Mr. Speaker, that when you're in good times, everybody seems to be a good leader. But when you have challenging times, that is when you really see what real and true leadership is all about. So we are all leaders over here. I don't know about you. We are all leaders. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and what we have seen is how this government has mishandled from the start this COVID-19 mishandled, and I'll point it out. Unprepared, gloating about being the model, the role model for the Caribbean, making false claims about international agencies like PAHO, making false claims just for politics. That is how this has been handled for the most part. Mr. Speaker, I think it's early in May, in March, early in March, probably the first or second week of March, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce wanted a meeting with the government to deal with this coming pandemic. The Minister of Labor, member for Nevis 10, attended the meeting. He had absolutely no plan and nothing to present from the government. Up to that time, Mr. Speaker, not even a draft plan was in place to be able to have this discussion with the chamber. They took nobody from the Ministry of Health to the meeting, a pandemic, a health crisis. So anything that they would want to know about health in that meeting could not have been discussed. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the chamber took their own decisions. And so they laid off a lot of workers. They laid off a lot of workers. And so we have workers right now in this country today, Mr. Speaker, who have been out of work for four and five weeks to date. Four and five weeks out of work. And up to now, not a penny. Not a penny. And we hear all the time the boast about surpluses and surpluses and surpluses. But up to today, not a cent in the hands of the workers. And so I say, we were unprepared, not ready, no foresight, and no plan. And so when you hear that businesses could get 8% off if they kept 75% of their workers, you have to laugh. Because why wasn't this told to them at that time? It might have helped. But you come two and three weeks after that to make a statement about businesses could get 8% off 
their income tax, their business tax, if they keep 75% of the workers, where the workers don't go Workers don't go home. Workers don't go home. So what were they going to do? We call them at that time, Mr. Speaker? We make a joke. Make a joke, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, people were calling. People were calling for the borders to be closed earlier. Calling for the borders to be closed earlier. Fell on deaf ears. Fell on deaf ears. Waited until we had cases, confirmed cases, in order to close the borders. Totally unprepared, Mr. Speaker. Totally unprepared. Mr. Speaker, the Tuesday of the stimulus package, the so-called stimulus package, because of course there's nothing stimulating about it, but the so-called stimulus package, the Tuesday, a big sign dance, as usual. And people tired talk and talk. People tired of the talk. When you hear people all the time, they're tired of the talk. They're tired of the talk. That, yeah, I can fix my teaching, but you can't fix the misappropriation. <laughs> Not that. The misappropriation that you do on your clients' funds, you can't fix that. Okay, okay, yeah. well, let, let me let him know that. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I was saying to you, nice, a light moment, isn't it? <laughs> light moment. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I want to say to you that we have had a failure of good an effective crisis communication. There's no transparency, and people don't believe. Every day we have in these briefings should have been left up to the professionals. Let me take out this so you can see my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been left up to the professionals, Mr. Speaker, in order to bring these briefings. Instead, every day, one song and dance going on there with pure politics, putting politics before the people's health. Mr. Speaker, Dr. Joe presented 19 kits, test kits, antibodies, 19 kits. And what? The junior minister, the junior minister, Get up in a briefing. Oh, Dr. Ju presented 19. I made a small presentation. She's emphasizing small presentation of 19 kits, but they couldn't use them because they were in Mandarin. Well, I hope the mass from the Taiwanese ones in Mandarin, Mr. Speaker. Petty politics. Petty politics, Mr. Speaker. But you had one Alex Nisbet and one Dr. Redmond, who they say presented some antibody kits as well. And they accepted them. And you don't hear nothing, the junior minister. And no minister making any comment about those kits. But they come on to try to see if they could play politics with these briefings that they say they're having, putting politics over the people's health. And Mr. Speaker, the junior minister, sad to say, she has a history of misleading the country. And so people don't have any confidence in her and what she says. And this pandemic situation, the same thing is happening. The same thing. Leave it to the professionals. Leave it to the professionals who are there. Same thing. We are probably the only country who have cases that we call import related. That's no way in power, no way in care for, import related, only in St. Kitts and Nevis, spinning everything, can't trust them. She comes back, oh, we have some local spread in a house. 
local spread in a household, Mr. Speaker, kind of one fellow, the house must be in the sky. The house got to be in the sky. How can people have any faith and trust in what is being said at these briefings? Local spread in a house. And that's what we're saying, leave it to the professionals. Because it's pure politics that they're playing when these briefings are on. And when you look at it, the member for number seven, he's a classic non-leader. He will never go out there to announce any of those confirmed cases, not him. He will be hiding, and I don't even know where the Minister of Health is. I don't know where the Minister of Health is. Because all throughout this session, Mr. Speaker, all throughout this session, nobody could find the Minister of Health. The, 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 yeah, she is the Minister of Health. I thought she was junior. But the senior Minister of Health is absent. Just give out garbage pan. Absent, Mr. Speaker. In a health crisis, no one it soon. In a health crisis, Mr. Speaker, health crisis, Mr. Speaker, we can't find the Minister of Health, probably the only country in the world, only country in the world where the Minister of Health is absent from all parts and all forms of this pandemic, Mr. Speaker. Well, if you can leave it to professionals, why put the junior minister health where you know nothing about science? Leave it to the professionals. So, so, Mr. Speaker, we have a situation here where the failure to communicate effectively and transparency is absolutely in vogue here. Mr. Speaker, we were told that the test from CAFO, it takes four to five days for them to come back. We were told so in one of the briefings. We heard CAFO themselves saying it takes 24 to 48 hours. So who must believe? No, who must we believe, Mr. Speaker? And so as I continue, Mr. Speaker, despite that interruption, I would say, Mr. Speaker, we heard from the junior minister that they sent out 12 cases one day, and the next day, the results were back. But when you look, 33 pending. So the people want an explanation. You sent out what? You must have had something special about those cases. The public needs to know it's a public information. And that's one of the things that Powell said. People must know, there must be information. Instead of that, the hiding, the lack of transparency. You send out 12 cases yesterday. They, they come back today, where you got 33 pending. What happened to the 33 that's pending? What's happened to them? What's happened to them, Mr. Speaker? Again, they always believe that people are not listening and that people are foolish. The amount of misinformation and deliberate spin that's put out there just for politics, Mr. Speaker, mixing up the pandemic. Mr. Speaker, as I said, during this time, you always would see who true leaders are. You don't have to look too far to get an example of lack of leadership. Mr. Speaker, the member for number seven went up to the camp. All they say is, we're going to test your temperature with something you're selling off like a gun. He refused to be tested, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker that is politics. The member for number seven went up to the camp. He was going to ZIZ. Yes. The persons at the guard house that let people in, they have specific instructions to ensure that everybody who is passing through the gate, they have the exceptions. Everybody who is passing through the gate 
must have the temperature checked. He went with his bodyguards, sorry, the member for number seven, accompanied by his bodyguards. Mr. As leader, you would have thought, leader of the country, you would have led by example and follow what the persons are saying God does with the instructions. But no, he had to say, you know who, you know who I am? Thank you. So Mr. Speaker, he refused to get the test. And now we have an officer charged, charged, Mr. Speaker, out of the matter, charged because the lack of leadership. Do as I say, but not as I do. And we are saying that in these times, in these times, you need true leaders who will lead by example, especially in this pandemic time. Mr. Speaker, we're in a lockdown. We're in a lockdown. But you see pictures of the Deputy Prime Minister during the lockdown. And the Prime Minister and some other people live in, having fun, breaching the social distancing that they are preaching to the public. Breaching it, Mr. Speaker. And then we're talking about leadership. Lead by example. That's what the people about there saying. That's what they're saying. And so, Mr. Speaker, Next Gen SKN had to show that we care for the people, that we have foresight, that we know that in times like this, they would need someone or some group to really care for them. And so we launched our Next Gen initiative and took out care packages and gave out in two rounds over 2,000 care packages. Guess what, Mr. Speaker? When we were giving out at the end of the first round, at a briefing, as usual, the political briefing, the Attorney General gets up 21. talking about how we out there giving out care packages. Mark you. We sat and obtained the permission of the Commissioner of Police, who I understand was dragged over the coals for giving us the permission to carry out those packages. I said, the Attorney General, in spite of that, came in a briefing and sought to play politics in the briefing, as they do with nearly all the briefings, to say, warning us that we are not supposed to do that. We must give them to Nemo, Mr. Speaker. Give them to Nemo to give out. And threatened us with being locked up, he said, the Attorney General. But the very same day, the member for Nevis 9 was doing the exact same thing in Nevis. I don't know if he works for Nemo. And I don't know if the AG was also sending a message to him about being locked up. But worse than that, Mr. Speaker, worse than that, after we had given out two rounds and the people of the country saying, where the government? Look how we're suffering. Where the government? It's sort of scrambling, if you want to see them. Scrambling, I'm glad to get out some, you know. I'm really happy to get out some, because people really hungry, eh? People really in need. Scrambling. We went out in days when there were partial lockdown, when you had time to go out. So did the member for Navy's night. But the member for St. Christopher 5 and the member for St. Christopher 4 out there on lockdown days. Total lockdown days. Scrambling to get out packages in reaction to our care initiative. And the member for number seven, I understand he took also the caretaker for number three. Round you know, cook food on lockdown days, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, 
one set of rules for us. Even want to lock us up, but a, set, a different set for those over there. Mr. Speaker, no leadership. Even when the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Sports were saying on the advice of the Ministry of Health, they're canceling sports meets, primary school championships, high school championships, because of the COVID-19 and the social distancing and all of the protocols, the government was still having town halls. The government was still having town halls, breaching the very rules that they said they're setting for the public. What kind of leadership is that, Mr. Speaker? The same health people in the meetings. Well, on the radio, that's why you can't believe what they're saying, you know. They're talking about, oh, because of these protocols, we're canceling these sports events, which should have been canceled, Mr. Speaker. Should have been. But how is it that the government is still engaging in breaching the very protocols that they're asking the public to comply with? That is what we're talking about, Mr. Speaker. The hypocrisy. The fact that you can't take nothing they say because they say one thing and do something completely different, as you see with the taking of the temperature. And so, Mr. Speaker, one of the other ways in which this pandemic has been totally mishandled is that there's been no involvement of the opposition. This is probably the only country in the world, no matter how much whole of society and so on, you hear them saying all the time, whole of society, whole of society, just words. In truth and in fact, no involvement of the opposition. They have not, and we have offered, and offered, and offered, thank you, thank you, and still offering, because we believe, we believe, Barbados sent to all the parties, all. Antigua sent to all the parties, all the political parties, all. Just like how you sent to all social um, groupings, all the political parties. But not here, because they're playing politics with the pandemic, a serious matter like that. And they want to put politics in it before the people's health. And so the opposition continues to be excluded from any consultation and any committee to deal with this pandemic. Mr. Speaker, if the opposition were involved, they might have a stimulus package, not this. They might have a stimulus package because this thing here is certainly not well thought out. It's makeup as you go. And that has been one of the main traits of this government for the five years, so it's nothing new. Make up as you go. You start off saying, oh, the stimulus is for these set of workers. And then boss men come and say, okay, boss men too. And then maybe another group come and say, okay, those too. Not well thought out. Probably mishandled. Because there are many groups of workers who are outside the loop, Mr. Speaker. Because this pandemic, as you know, has a multiplier effect. It has a multiplier effect. So even though those who work in the hotel industry, in hospitality and so on, were directly affected, it's a multiplier effect. Landlords can't get the rent because these people here can't pay rent. Other business people, other business people, can't make no money because the country on lockdown. You know how much small business people come crying to me? They got a rent to pay. They got a mortgage to pay. Nobody is considering them. The private preschool owners can open, can open because the children they remain there. Well, of course, but somebody who is in government must try and find a way to help them. Help them. Don't let them suffer. People are suffering. People are in pain. 
And this government is just talking, 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 talking. Every day, talking, talking. People tired of the talk. They want to be able to see some form of action. And Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I hope that when they're paying this $1,000 or whatever they say they're paying, that it will also be paid for the month of March. I hope it's not just from April because like the bill, they ain't saying when it start. Look what you see. They ain't saying when it start because there's a smartness in it. But there are people out there who lost their job since the first week in March. The first week in March. And so March must be considered. So for those who have ears to hear, the people are suffering. They have no money since the first week in March. Some of them four or five weeks out of the jobs. Consider March. And as for the $1,000, you hear them talking about the $1,000. They need to properly explain it to the people. Thousand dollars, thousand dollars. But if for some reason you are reduced hours, or you're getting some stipend in some other way, that takes you up to seven hundred dollars a month. You only getting three hundred dollars. You only getting three hundred dollars. You ain't getting a thousand dollars. So let them explain to people. And if you're getting. Uh, uh, no. People don't understand it, so I'm explaining it to them. And they understand it in figures, not no makeup, no difference in all them story. Give them the figures so that if the stipend or whatever they get at the end of the month comes to a thousand dollars, they get nothing. If at the end of the month what you get is a thousand dollars, you will get nothing. And people need to understand that. So what you have, Mr. Speaker, is a situation where someone would have been making, say, $2,000 before a month. They lost their job, and now they're getting $1,000 to provide for their families. That is what this government is saying. And that is reasonable, they say. When you're gone from a little $2,000 a month to $1,000, and that is reasonable. And we're saying, Mr. Speaker, they should have involved the opposition because we have some next-gen ideas that could help them. For example, like child benefit. Because when you have single mothers and single parents, Apart from the $1,000, they should have even have access to some sort of child benefit. And so, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the last choice of leadership is we not only failing in leadership nationally, but regionally. Mr. Speaker, do you know who is the lead spokesman on health for CARICOM? Do you know? The member for number seven. The member for number seven, hiding from the meetings, not attending the meetings. First time he sent the deputy, sit in the meeting, well, it's um, virtual, but there, said absolutely nothing. The next time he sent, the member for Neve is 10. How can you be leading from behind? This is the lead, the lead spokesman on health. And they're having COVID, you know. They said it's a pandemic, serious business. And the lead spokesman and health absent from the meetings. Absent. That is the level of leadership that is happening with the member from number seven. And Mr. Speaker, I want to end by supporting what my colleague said and to say to the country, do not be fooled. By this 12 month period that they're trying to get in here, I agree with member for number three about the interpretation. You'd notice that in the resolution, it says emergency up to a period of 12 months. There's not up to in the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. There's not up to in the Constitution. The Constitution said 12 months are not up to 12 months. Not up to 12 months or 
say specific, but it's a trick they're trying. It's a trick. But I want the people of the country to know, why is it that this government would want to have some discretion on the limitation of people's rights? Because when you have a state of emergency, that would happen. You limit people's rights, a freedom of movement, and so on. Why you want to have 12 months of discretion on that? To manipulate people's freedom of movement and powers of arrest. Why you want that, Mr. Speaker? And, Mr. Speaker, there are some set dates in the Constitution. One would end on the 14th of May. Come what may, no matter how much months they say they're giving themselves authority for. Come the 14th of May, the House must dissolve. Emergency and no emergency. And come the 11th of August, we must have those elections. We must have those elections. So all who want to stay in power after that, all who want to stay in power after that, the people of this country must know we don't want no despots running the country. Because people know that is in times like these when governments have authority to restrict your rights that the despots show themselves. And what we see in here today is a despotic act to try to give themselves authority for 12 months past the, 4th of, the 14th of May and past the 11th of August when the elections are due. But let them know that by the 11th of August, this country must go to the polls. They're weighing in the balance and they are found wanting. And they're trying in every way to extend the time and the power. Not this time, brother. Not this time. Not this time. So the people of the country must understand that. We must not allow them to come in here and try to extend their authority past a time that the Constitution does not give them. Who can support that? Who can support that, Mr. Speaker? And so we say, not today. Come the 14th of May, and now you ain't sleeping, the house gonna dissolve. If you ain't dissolve it before that. But by the time you had to dissolve, and come the 11th of August, you got to call the election. What South Korea? They got a pandemic too. They have a pandemic, but they hold the elections. Pandemic does not erode democracy. Pandemic does not erode democracy. But you guys, I'm going to lay the different kettle of fish. <laughs> we have a constitution that we must abide by. I'm going to go according to Britain. So, a constitution that we must abide by. So, don't come in here to give people the impression that you can go past the 11th of August because you can't. You can't go past the 11th of August. So, you can't go past the 11th of August. And so I say that this is a trick. And you notice, I didn't like, I took a dim view of the fact that three days ago, we got a notice. But only when we come in here, we could get the resolution and we had to debate it. When they had the resolution all along, they had it all along. But we must get it when we come. And then the, the junior minister works because Congress put it on the internet. Because they want nobody know what they're in here doing. They want nobody know that they're trying to extend this thing for 12 months. They don't want nobody to know that. So that is why you see the only give us when they come in, hiding up everything, like how they hide the IMF report. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I would not support this diabolical act to try to give, no, to try to give this government authority to go, why you want to pass something that would put you past the time the constitution says you must be there? Why you want to do that? So, Mr. Speaker, I would not support this. Thank you.